Good morning. You know, God is so awesome. And I want to thank him for keeping me and protecting me and providing for me, uh, especially in strengthening me when I'm weak. For God is truly holy and he is a provider. He is a protector. He is everything you need. And I just want to thank the praise team this morning as they brought us this song called Awesome because God is truly awesome. Welcome to Simeon Baptist Church. You know, this is the place where we love sharing God's perfect love with all people. I'm Pastor John Rollins, and I'm happy to be in front of you today uh, to just have an opportunity to, uh, to explore God's Word one more time. I want to thank you for being with us on this first Sunday of November. This is the Sunday that we take the Lord's Supper, so I pray that you have some bread and some wine uh, with you to partake as we uh, participate in communing, uh, with the communion with God as we take the Lord's Supper. And with, if you're with us for the first time, I say welcome. You may go to our website, simeonchurch.com. Uh, go there, be, befriend with us on, on, we have a Facebook page too, Simeon uh, Baptist Church Facebook page. You may go there and, and, and befriend us. Go to our YouTube page channel that is and uh, subscribe uh, to be with us at all times grow with us in the word grow with us in song and just all that you do we would just want to welcome you here with us on today you know this is the first uh, Sunday of the month but not only that it's a new month called November and so if you have a birthday in November I say happy birthday to you and to all the November birthdays, and also if you have an anniversary on this month, I say bless you. I don't know how many years you've been married, but I do know that we honor marriage here at Simeon Baptist Church, and we understand that God honors it. God established that covenant of, of male and female coming together as one. So whatever your day is, congratulations to you also. And remember here at Simeon as we uh, continue, you know, as, as we give our tithes and offering, there's a, a verse that says, do not neglect to do good and to share what you have for such sacrifices are pleasing to God from Hebrews 13 and 16. But then also 2 Corinthians 9 and 7 tells us, each of you should give what you have decided in your heart to give not reluctantly 
or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. And I know you've heard that. So we want to make sure that you give, that you give your best, give sacrificially, and give from the heart. Just honor God with what he deserves, because he owns everything. And we are just stewards of the things that he has given us. So he has truly blessed us. Uh, but as uh, Simeon, you can give through text. Uh, you can uh, go to 615-900-2141. You can text your givings in there. Or you can go to our website, simeonchurch.com, go to online giving and give through that uh, venue. Or if you're old school like some, you can mail it in, Simeon Baptist Church, 3808 Parks Retreat Drive, here at good old Antioch, Tennessee, 37013. But we're just glad to have you with us today uh, to be able to worship in spirit and in truth. And we pray that God's word does encourage you uh, today. So uh, at this time, we're going to have another number from our praise and worship team. And then we're going to get right into the word.
Amen, amen, amen. Thank you, praise and worship team. You know, Father, we truly do thank you for you are the Holy One. You're the one that keeps us, you love us, you care for us. And Father, we never want to let you down. And we thank you, praise team, for a wonderful uh, song that really ushers us in to the presence of God. God is so good. And you can't say enough to show how much he loves us. You know, as we get into the word today, I want to talk about the benefits of God's word. The benefits of God's word. And it's going to come from Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through 6. But before we go there, before I read that, I want to just uh, say a little quick prayer. Uh, we had a couple people in our church that's had some, some things that happened in their life this week, and I just want to lift them up in prayer today. Father, we thank you as we come into your presence, as we come to hear your word and to be encouraged by it. Lord, we just pray for all of those who stand in need of prayer. Father, we pray for Mother Leona Phillips this morning who had an accident over the week and has had to have surgery. We pray, God, for her health and for you to just oversee her, to heal her body. And Father, we pray for Lady Rollins, my wife, and some of the news that we got over the week. But God, we know that you're in control of all things. So we ask that you be with her. Uh, give us what we need to put our faith and belief in what only you can do. So God, we come to you with the word of God today. I pray that you use me in your only and mighty way. Speak from my tongue to encourage others. And may God, you be glorified and only Satan be terrified. And I'd just be so careful to give you the praise, honor, and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, as I was thinking of this word, the benefits of, of, of God's word, Psalms 1 and uh, one through six says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of waters that yields its fruit in its season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. The wicked are not so, but they are like chaff that the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in judgment nor the sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of righteousness, but the way of the wicked will perish. You see, there's some benefits of being committed to God's word. Now this sermon will take a look at several specific benefits that, that, that you will experience if you choose to be committed to knowing and following God's word. Now the benefits are guaranteed because they are coming right out of his word. You know, we're all wired to know that we love to have benefits, the benefits of doing something. You see, a benefit is something that produces good or, or for something that is helpful in the future. There's the benefits of working hard, working harder. In, in sports, if you, you feel like that if you work so hard that you can outwork the next person that you know you have a better chance of being a starter on your team, whether it be basketball, football, or whatever, Whatever it is, you know that if you work really hard, you stand the opportunity to be first string, not second or third string. You see, there's a, there's a benefit of having health insurance that will help cover a hospital bill or some type of medical expense in the future, especially in times of sickness. See, there's a benefit in working hard trying to get your education. And, if you, and you, if you apply that knowledge that you have acquired, that you have worked so diligently for, 
you know you have a better chance of getting a better position or a better promotion, a benefit. You see, the same desire or benefit can be applied uh, to being committed and knowing and following the word of God. Matter of fact, the author of Psalms, this first Psalm, provides multiple benefits for those who are committed to God's word. And I just want to quickly talk about four things that we can benefit from just through these verses of knowing God's word. Number one is this, is that benefits come when worldly influences are avoided. Benefits come when worldly influences are avoided. Matter of fact, that verse one says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. Those committed to the word of God or God's word will avoid worldly influences. I, I, you see, I believe we all want to live in this realm of being blessed. In other words, we all want to experience life with the full assurance of joy and peace and prosperity with nothing with hell. We all want to be blessed. Uh, now, now, who wouldn't want a life of blessings or who wouldn't want a life of just being blessed? Just as the psalmist said, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of, of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers. We are surrounded by ungodly counsel. What do I mean by that, preacher? It says the ungodly are those who oppose righteousness. And the author of Psalms number one begins with a list of these characteristics of one who is committed to God's word, who will, uh, will avoid those influences. Uh, namely, uh, those committed to God's word will not engage in an, an ongoing influential relationships with, with those who do not actively follow God. Oh, you know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about those negative influences in your life. The, those who want to get you to go to happy hour after work instead of going home. Or, or those who are more about play than they are about work. Or, or those who enjoy gospels and gossip and they want you to participate in name calling and, and, and backstabbing and all of those things. You know, those who have negative influences. Yeah, those are the ones that want to grab you and bring you inside. I'm talking about worldly influences, those who uh, attract you to pursue your worldly desires. But don't be fooled. Don't get sidetracked while you're trying to walk in the counsel of the Lord and you will end up walking in the counsel of the wicked. I've heard it said that evil influence is, is like a nicotine patch. Uh, you cannot help but absorb what sticks to you. Uh, so we don't want that nicotine patch. We don't want those things, those negative things that stick to us, that influence us in the wrong way. Uh, those who are committed to God and his word will not walk, will not stand, will not sit in the company of mockers or ridiculers or scoffers. But who are the ungodly? Well, uh, they are the people who just leave God out. Uh, there's no fear of God in their eyes. They live as though God doesn't exist. Uh, there, are multi there are multitudes of people all around the world that does not care about our Lord and our Savior. Uh, but they would love to have you be part of them. Uh, they get up in the morning and they never turn to God in prayer. Uh, they never thank him for the food that he has placed on their table. Now, they don't thank him for the, the life that they live. They don't thank him for uh, the, the good things that he has given them. They just keep on living it up, but they live it up without God. They are ungodly and they just leave God out. You see, we must avoid uh, the worldly influences of this group, but we must be strong in our relationship to the word of God so that we may share with this group. They need to see your walk in the Lord. They need to see your talk in the Lord. They need to hear your, your story, how God changed your heart. 
But what we can't let happen is those negative influences tear down our walls to where we become weak in the Lord and then we begin to walk with them. You see, you, you got to get God's word in you that gives you the strength, that gives you the boldness and the confidence to go out and talk to an evil world. But you have to be able to stand. It's just like Ephesians 6 said, you have to put on your armor. You put on the full armor of God. You got to be in prayer. You got to be in the word. But still yet, you need to be strong enough with your armor to go out into a dying world and be able to share the good news of Jesus Christ. You see, that's the benefit. That is the benefit that, that we talk about. It, it comes when worldly influences are avoided. But there's a number two. Benefits increase as you study the word of God. Benefits increase as you study the word of God. You see, verse two says this, it says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord and on his law, he meditates day and night. You see, our delight should be in the law of the Lord and we should meditate on his word day and night. Two specific actions are seen here. First, there is the delight is in the law of the Lord or in other words, in the law, the Lord's instructions. Because to delight in something means to find great pleasure or great joy within it. Uh, now, now, we take delight and we enjoy a lot of things, uh, especially in this world. We, we delight in going to the Dairy Queen and, and getting a banana split or a blizzard. Uh, we, we take delight in enjoying this huge piece of cherry cheesecake from the Cheesecake Factory, or, or at least I do. Uh, but but we take delight in certain things. We find delight and joy in raising our children. We we take delight in helping others or we, we take delight uh, in exercising, especially after you've been to the or I, I've been to the Cheesecake Factory. Uh, but we find delight in shopping. We find delight in giving. We, we find delight in just seeing nature outside. But those are just some of the things that we find joy in. But there is a greater joy uh, that you and I can have, and, and that's in the Word of God. That is in studying the Word of God and delighting in the Lord's instructions. We find delight in the application of carrying out his word. You see, if we love the word, we'll find great joy. We'll find great comfort in reading and growing in the word. Why? Because it gives us hope through the tough days, through the painful days. It gives us strength to keep pressing on in times of weakness. It gives us joy in times of sorrow. It, it soothes our discouraged heart. It, it keeps you from falling into temptation. It, it is a comfort in times of trouble. And that's just a few things that you get from the joy of studying God's word because the word of God will strengthen you to encourage you to know that God is able to to know that God is powerful, to know that God is loving, to know that God is caring, to know that God is a refuge, to know that God is your protection. All of those things are found as we take delight in the law of the Lord. But there's another part. It says, but meditate on it day and night. That's a benefit. That's a benefit. Uh, so it's more than just going to a Sunday service via Zoom each month. It is being consistent and ongoing and pursuing God and pursuing his word. It is your hour by hour, day by day walk with God. It's about building your relationship with a loving God. It is about setting your mind on things above. It, it, it's where you find peace for your soul. You see, the scripture gives us this peace. Perhaps the most desired possession that people want to have in the world is peace. But it can only be found in the Lord through consistent meditation and prayer with your Savior. No, you will not find it in politics. You will not find peace in politics. You will not find peace 
in a relationship outside of your marriage and you will not find peace with your gin and juice. You just will not find peace that way, but you will find peace and strength in the word. Psalms 19, 119, 165 says, those who love your law have great peace and nothing causes them to stumble. That's a benefit. It, it helps you walk a straight path. And the more you meditate on the word of God, the closer your relationship comes with God. Your relationship is strengthened with God as you continue to grow with your loving Savior. And then there's also a third benefit. Uh, the, ben uh, the first benefit comes when worldly influences are avoided. Uh, benefits increase as you study the word of God and the benefits uh, to God's word will produce a fruitful life. Uh, benefits, uh, studying and following God's word produces a fruitful life. You see, verse three says this. You're like a tree planted by streams of water that yields its fruit in season and its leaf does not wither. In all that he does, he prospers. In all that he does, he prospers planted by streams of water. You see, planted actually means to transplant, not merely just plant, but to transplant. We are planted by God's hand, not self-sown, but by streams of water. And this is reference really uh, to the Holy Spirit. God wants us to be where we can drink of the Spirit. Ephesians 5, 8 says, don't get drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. Like a seed planted on good soil, we, we, we sink into the, to the roots deep in God. Uh, you get subplanted. Our souls are rooted. Matter of fact, Christ uh, in, in Colossians 2, 6 and 7, it says, So then, just as you have received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to walk in Him, being rooted and built up in him and established in the faith. This gives us spiritual strength, which, which, which comes from a long-term relationship with God and his word. And the believer is to be rooted and built up in Christ. And, and this verse gives us two pictures. It's the picture uh, of, of being rooted like a tree. Uh, the believer is to be like a towering tree that has roots deeply planted in the ground. And when it's deeply planted in the ground, the ground provides strength against the winds and the storms of life and gives nourishment to the body of the tree that it grows stronger as the trunk gets bigger. See, the believer is to draw his nourishment and strength from Christ. And then there's the picture of this being built or constructed like that of a building. Uh, Jesus is the foundation of life, the only sure foundation. Therefore, the mature believer is a person who has built his life upon Christ. And I want to make note of this, the, the emphasis upon a strong attachment and a flow of nourishment and life from Christ is to the believer. He wants us to be strong. He wants us to be embedded. He wants us to be grounded and strong. And such a person is sturdy. Uh, he's not like a tumbling weed that when the wind blows, you, you see it tumble down the road. And, you know, in, in times of, of drought, which might kill others, it doesn't affect those who are attached to the word of God. You know, there was a farmer and he invited his pastor to come to his farm where he proudly displayed his harvest. Uh, his harvest was covered with corn and wheat in all the orchards. And the farmer told the pastor, he says, I'm proud of how my work has paid off. Well, the pastor turns, he says, now remember my brother, the Lord is the one who causes the blessings in our lives. Be sure to give him credit. Well, the old farmer says, well, pastor wants you to follow me over here. So the pastor follows him over there and they look, and he looks out to a nearby fence and he points to the field next door. And all you see is an overgrown cactus and you see waist deep weeds and you see scrubs and branches. And, and then he told the pastor, says, now that's what it looked like when the Lord had it. Well, farmer missed the point. He missed the whole point of what the pastor was saying. See, God does his part 
in providing the sun and the rain and the, the good earth and the seed. But God expects us or expect the farmer to do his part in planting in cultivating and weeding. You see, that's like our, our spiritual life. We, we need to plant, we need to cultivate, and we need to weed. Them. And as we do those things, God provides through his spirit, the sun and the rain. And then we begin to grow strong. We begin to branch out and then we begin to bear fruit. You see, the farmer had it all wrong. He tried to do things on his own and thought he had done it all. But as God that provided the rain for his orchards, for his field and the sun and the rain. You see, in, in order for a tree to be fruitful, it must receive sustaining water on a regular basis. In order for someone to have a fruitful life for God, he must be planted beside flowing streams and receive uh, the needed uh, substance that, that he can grow strong in it through his word. Remember what Jesus told the Samaritan woman at the well? He said, whoever drinks from the water that I give will never thirst again. And the question is, are you drinking living water that you may grow? You know, uh, the fruitful life is a life that is grounded in Christ through the study of his word. And this is not a guarantee that life is going to be smooth. There will be hardships and there will be struggles. But it is a guarantee that you will bear fruit even in difficult times and in dry seasons. Well, uh, we, we get benefits uh, when we uh, avoid worldly influences. We, we increase uh, our benefits are increased in the study of God's word. Uh, we produce fruit. Uh, that, which is a benefit from God. But then finally, benefits to God's word brings about a secured life. Says it in verse six, says, for the Lord knows the way of the righteous. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the, wick, the way of the wicked will perish. You see, we have all most felt like someone's looking at us. Have you ever gone somewhere and just felt like someone was looking at you. Whether it's your boss looking over your shoulder or whether it's a teacher overseeing your work in your class. And when you turn around, uh, you find it to be true. And then you get this strange feeling when somebody is looking over your shoulder. You know, I can remember one time I was at a retail store. I was walking around the store just minding my own business, just looking. But I just had this eerie feeling that somebody was looking at me. Somebody was following me everywhere I went. Uh, you, you know, uh, and I found out that to be a security person checking me out. And, uh, of course, I, I, didn't, I didn't like that feeling at all, at least not at that time. But you know what? I am so glad when the Lord watches over me. You know, I, I can be at ease and I can feel secure. Because I know, I know the Lord has my best interest at hand. I'm so glad the Lord watches over those who have an active and ongoing commitment to him and his word. Matter of fact, the, the, the verse says the Lord knows. It literally means to know intimately and personally. It's referring to your relationship with the heavenly father. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. And I know them. He knows your name. He knows what you're about. He knows your heart. He knows your throat. He knows everything about you. And that's the benefit of a relationship between the father and his children. You can feel secure wherever you go, wherever you are, because you know the Lord watches over you. He neither sleeps nor slumber. He never gets tired. He's always watching over you. That is the benefit of being his child. That is the benefit of being secure in Christ. That is the benefit of being committed to Christ. Galatians 3, 26 says, For in Christ you are all sons of God through faith. You see, the Lord knows the way, as he continues, of the righteous. He personally uh, 
ensures that we will meet our final destination, which is heaven. He guides our footsteps. He knows the way of the righteous, and we can have the assurance that he knows our final destination, which is heaven. And through his power and care, we can rest securely knowing he will take us to our eternal home. Can I get a witness? Uh, this passage shows that the Lord is watching over those who have an active and an ongoing commitment to him and his word. And he is doing this out of love. It's nothing that he had to do. He could have had somebody else watching over you, but he decided to do it himself. I, can I get an amen right there that the Lord is watching over you? You ain't got to worry about nobody uh, that can secure your life because he has already secured your life. You know, as I conclude here, and we're talking about the benefits of God's word. You see, if something is important in your life, you will commit yourself to it. That's a benefit. If you like or you love something, you, you commit your time to it because you're looking for that benefit. If your job is important to you and you commit to it, you're looking for a future benefit. If your family is important, you commit yourself to it. Because you are looking after your family, you committed to it, that is a benefit. If a person is important to you, you commit the time with them, you spend time with them. If your health is important to you, you commit yourself to working out or taking whatever medication that you can take because you're looking for a future benefit. But there are greater benefits in walking with the Lord. God's word, number one, leads to salvation. John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him should not and will not perish. We are saved by believing the truth of the scriptures. That's a benefit. First Peter 1, 23 says, you are cleansed from your sins when you obey the truth. Uh, the, the scriptures guide your footsteps. Your, 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 the, the, the word of God keeps you on a straight path. Psalms 119, 105 says, his word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That's a benefit. He will show us where to go, what to say, and how uh, to make decisions. His word gives us direction. It warns us of the consequences. His word directs us to wisdom. Psalms 119, 130 says it gives understanding to the simple. His word lift our burdens. We can run to his word in our times of hurt, in our times of pain, in our times of grief, in our times of loneliness. You see, the word of God and studying the word of God and being in the word of God is a benefit for our future lives. And the question is, do you want to share in God's benefit package? You know, when you work for a corporation, when you work for a company, they have a benefit package for you to help you in whatever, to get you glasses, to have medical uh, insurance, whatever it may be, to have a 401k. There is a benefit package for you. But do you want to share in God's benefit package? Because there is so much in his package that you just, it, it, it's overflowing. But do you want to share in God's benefit package? Just just, com just complete the form because, because Jesus completed that package for you on Calvary. And when he gave up his life for you and me, he was completing that benefit package for you and for me. And he has provided all the benefits by securing our future on the cross. And the question today for you is this, is will you receive Christ's benefit package? You know, there may be someone out there today uh, that doesn't know the Lord, doesn't know Jesus Christ, but you need to be secured by his benefit package. You know, the Bible tells us that we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. So we are without any type of security when we are out there on our own, when we don't know Jesus Christ. But he says to us, uh, you have sinned, you have fallen short of the mark, but guess what? I sent my son to the cross to die for your sins, and all you have to do is just 
ask him to be part of your life, to seek him, ask him into your heart and believe that God raised him from the dead. And if you do that, you will be saved. And I want to offer that opportunity to someone today. Maybe you don't know the Lord and never given your heart and life to, to him. Well, I want to say just a quick prayer. And if you just repeat that after me, you will become part of his family. You will receive the full benefits of all that he can give you. And that benefit and that package is eternal life with him. So pray with me. Dear Lord, I am a sinner. I would like to repent of my sins and turn my life over to you. I believe you died on the cross for, for me. I also believe that God raised you from the dead. I ask, Lord, for you to come into my heart and my life, that I can walk with you and talk with you and just follow you and follow your footsteps. So, Lord, I thank you for my life, and I thank you for answering my prayer, and I pray this in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. You know, if you have accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior today, I would like you to call into this number, 615-549-5924. We'll have counselors or someone there to greet you, uh, to talk to you, and we would just love for you to call, just to open up your heart to someone who can encourage you and that we can just learn a little bit about who you are. But if you did accept Christ today, I say congratulations to you. I celebrate with you that you're now a child of God because he is the one that can forgive sin. So as we continue today, we're going to now prepare our hearts for a time of communion. We want to get your, your bread and your wine and all of those things prepared um, we will have a, a time of just taking the elements and receiving them in the name of Jesus. Because he said, do this in remembrance of me. And as we prepare our hearts for communion on this Sunday, uh, just think about what the Lord has done for you, that he has given up his life on the cross. You know, when he was with the disciples, as he was teaching them in small groups, he eventually told them that he was going away and coming back again. But he said, while I'm away, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. They didn't understand, but they went forward. So as we prepare our hearts for our time of communion, the Lord tells us to make sure that we uh, come before him with a clean heart and a clean spirit, uh, which means if you have any sin in your life and in your heart, you need to go to the Lord in prayer, seeking forgiveness, because he tells us to examine ourselves. So make sure uh, that as you partake of these elements that you have examined your heart before you take them. So I want to read uh, this morning from Matthew, excuse me, Mark 14, uh, starting at verse 12. And it says, On the first day of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, where do you want us to go and make preparation for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city, and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you there. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room that I may eat the Passover with my disciples? He will show you a large upper room, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. Disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared 
the Passover. When evening came, Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely not I. It was one of the twelve, he replied, the one who dips bread into the bowl with me. Son of man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. When they were eating, Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and offered it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many, he said to them. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Let us pray. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you for what you have done for us. You told us to do this in remembrance of you and that you gave your life for each one. You rose from the dead. You ascended into heaven to be with your Father. So God, we come seeking forgiveness of our sins, that as we partake of these elements, that we come to you with a clean heart. So God, we, we thank you and praise you for what you have done for us. In Jesus' name, amen. I hope you have your bread and wine with you. And at this time, we are going to partake of the bread. The Lord says, this is my body that I have given for you, broken for mankind. So let us now take the bread. And then he took the cup. And he told them, he said, this is the blood that I have shed for you. You know, they pierced him in the side and put crowns of thorn on his head and pressed them up against his head and blood flowed. But he says, this is the blood that I have shed for you. So let us now take the blood. The Bible says after they had partaken of the the Last Supper, they went out into the, to the garden and they began to sing a hymn. These 12 men, minus one, plus one later. They would go out and they would spread this gospel some 2,000 years later. The gospel that we know today, the gospel that we proclaim, the good news of Jesus Christ. So let us pray. Father, we thank you once again for these elements and we thank you, God, for what you you have done for us and that you gave your son and he gave his life for mankind. Amen. You know, I want to thank you for being with us today. I pray that you have received a message that will lift you up and encourage you. And I pray that God keeps you uh, through the next week, that you are led and guided by the Lord and he covers you with the umbrella of his protection. So may God be with you, bless you, walk with you, and talk with you. So we'll see you on next week.